Hi everybody, this is Michael Orl from MobileBurn.com and this is the Google Nexus 7. It's the very first Nexus branded tablet. It's also the first device on the market to run Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. It's built by ASUS and uh, this is a special edition model that was given away at the Google I.O. Developers Conference. The device is on pre-sale now for $199. It'll be available soon and with that $199 price point comes a quad-core processor and a 720p resolution display. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so let's power up the display briefly so you can see it. It's a 7 inch display, uh, 800 by 1280 pixels of resolution, IPS unit, uh, corning glass, it doesn't specify Gorilla Glass, but I'm assuming it's probably Gorilla Glass, but uh, let's take a look at the back of the device first, it's kind of cool looking here. You can see it's uh, all in white, this is the special edition that was handed out at the uh, Google I.O. conference this year where the device was launched alongside of uh, Android 4.1 has a uh, white, not quite soft touch, it's plastic, but it's a little bit soft to it somehow. I'm not sure how to describe it. It could just be the dimpling here, a little bit finer than you would see on a golf ball. Of course, it says Nexus right across here. Power standby and volume rocker buttons. There's the uh, speaker port in the back. Uh, not fantastic sound coming out of that when you're trying to play music or anything like that. Asus logo. And uh, if we take a look at the uh, bottom edge here, you can see there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a micro USB charging and data port. Um, quite fond of the fact that it has a uh, micro USB for charging. It's uh, infinitely more convenient when you're traveling. Nothing too much else to see on the device in terms of hardware control, so though you might have noticed up top here the light sensor and the uh, 1.2 megapixel forward-facing camera. There is no rear-facing camera on this device. and There's also no micro SD memory card expansion slot. Uh, you have to rely on either 8 gig or 16 gigs of internal storage. Uh, this particular model has 8 gig limited to 8 gig uh, for the I.O. event, but you can get it in 16 gig versions uh, elsewhere when it goes on sale for $200. Um, let's take a look at uh, some of the other features. Of course, this is Android 4.1. Uh, it doesn't look all that much different from Ice Cream Sandwich when you just first glance at it, but you'll notice that um, it's a little more phone-like than uh, Honeycomb-type uh, UIs have been in the past. Still have the same controls down the bottom, but they're located in the center just like they would be on a phone as opposed to in the uh, lower left-hand corner. The uh, controls across the bottom, you have the main app tray there, as well as shortcuts, which is something you see on the phones, but you didn't see on Honeycomb. Also, the notification area is now up at the top. It is no longer down at the bottom. In addition to it being at the top, you have uh, fewer controls than you used to have. You used to have uh, access to, in addition to settings and screen rotation lock, which is still there, you would be able to change brightness settings and uh, turn Wi-Fi on and off and things like that. Pretty much now you're just limited to uh, rotation and going to settings. That button there clears all of the different notifications, which you can swipe away. But one of the really cool things with the uh, notification system is that it now supports expandable notifications. You can see that's a screenshot I captured um, right here. Some Gmail messages and uh, I scroll back, you can see there's an AIM message as well. It's already expanded since it's just a single message, um, but I could make it smaller as well. Whether the messages in the notification area come up expanded or not depends on how many they are and what it thinks is most important, how much room you've got. So in any case, you can always swipe them away. That's very um, useful. This is the Google Cards system right here. It's telling me that it's uh, 87 degrees and clear where I'm currently located in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Cards will also um, show up for things that Google Now, the new system that powers it, uh, thinks is important, such as your morning commute if it sees that um, you know, there's excessive traffic or things like that, or show you sports scores if you're always checking up on, say, like the Phillies games or things like that. And I'll show you some other cool features of it uh, a little bit later. Before I show off any more of the uh, user interface enhancements in Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, I want to talk a little bit more about the hardware. Uh, powering the device, we've got an NVIDIA Tiger 3 quad-core processor. Uh, ARM A9 architecture, a little bit older than what you see in the uh, latest version of uh, Snapdragons, but uh, still quite fast and uh, seemingly uh, pretty power efficient. The device weighs 340 grams and it measures about 10.5 uh, millimeters in thickness. Give you a bit better idea what that means in terms of size. This is the Amazon Kindle Fire sitting on top of it. The uh, Nexus 7 is ever so slightly uh, longer same width and a little bit thinner than the Kindle Fire. 
And this is Samsung's Galaxy Tab 2 7.0. And again, the uh, Nexus is slightly, slightly longer. Um, actually, a little bit narrower than the Samsung, and again, slightly thinner than the Samsung. One of the new things that Jelly Bean offers in terms of a home screen management is the ability to just uh, swipe off uh, widgets that you no longer want. And I'm just going to uh, rearrange a couple here just to make a point. Um, of course we have the ability to resize widgets just like we have had for some time. But I'm also going to show you that it will resize dynamically and rearrange things to make it fit. Notice how it moved those icons and it's still too big to fit in there but when I let go it automatically shrinks it. Of course that only works if the widget is capable of shrinking down to a size that actually fits but when it does it's quite handy. As you would expect there's a good folder support. Uh, it's very easy to create folders. Uh, for example if I just take this shortcut to one of the books and drag it onto the play books icon we immediately have an unnamed folder and just tap here down at the bottom and we'll say books And there we are. Now, as I showed you before, if you want to get into the main menu, you access the uh, button down at the bottom as opposed to one in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. One of the changes from the uh, honeycomb look and feel we've seen in the last two OS revisions. Um, main menu is just like it was before. Uh, widgets are organized the same way as well. There's a quick link to the uh, Play Store up there. And so far, in my opinion, the uh, move towards the uh, phone-style uh, layout works really well, at least in a, a small tablet like this. I'm not sure how it would work in a 10-inch uh, tablet because, uh, unfortunately, this tablet does not work in landscape mode on the home screen. So um, I don't know if they're going to do the same thing when it comes to the larger tablets, but uh, a lot of people are going to be wanting to hold a 10-inch tablet uh, in landscape mode You know, just get a good hold on it. That does not work. Now, of course, the applications themselves still work in landscape mode. So uh, here's Google Plus for example. So you're going through here and you're looking at Google Plus in landscape mode and it looks fantastic. Uh, and then you hit the home button which of course is in the normal landscape orientation. You have to rotate the device in order to get back to work which is a little bit strange. And since I just mentioned Google Plus, uh, why don't I show you how that is now integrated into contacts. Let's see right here jump over to contacts. I uh, did a search here to uh, narrow the scope of the results shown here because I don't want you seeing uh, everybody's personal information. But if you tap here and you notice a little green dot that says available there, it says that uh, this account happens to be online. You see some of the information, you know, email addresses and things like that here and you have the ability to start a conversation in Google Plus or add to a circle and things like that. There's also updates here. You notice it's just partially on the screen. That means you can swipe over and see the most recent updates. These are a couple of tests that I just uploaded um, just so you can see what it looked like. Tap through and see one of the photos and it'll actually pull up the Google Plus client. 